I'm Lucas Haddock here with Content With Media at the Caterpillar site in Desford. Here I'm with... Ely Abbey Karam and I'm the product specialist for these compact wheel loader machines. We are going to be taking you around the 908 High Lift Compact Wheel Loader. <music> Ilias, what would you like to tell me about the difference between this one and the older machine since there is a lot more going on including this 180 windscreen. That's right, Lucas. There's a lot changed on this. Actually, everything on this cab has changed, even the coat hook. What we've done is we've kept the same frame, but we've increased the wiper coverage so you can see better and visibility at the front by having a single piece curved screen. We've also changed the steering wheel, which has tilting and telescoping so that you can adjust that to be the perfect position. You're sitting on our new premium seat. If you just put press the button, you can now get cooling and heating on this seat. So whether it's a hot day or a cold day, you're gonna be able to be really comfortable. I can see you could, you've got the display up here. You, you've got a lot of controls on that display to control the machine. But also you can see the, the forward facing camera, which is an option, or you could have a rear facing camera if needed. Ilias, that is really interesting. But what I would like to question, I'm sure this is a new feature. Usually the arms like separate to the seat. That's right, if you just bounce up and down on that seat, the, the, the joystick controls is now mounted to the seat base, much like our larger wheel loaders, which means you're in control and your arm is ergonomically positioned so you can be comfortable all day. Inside the cab, there's some three buttons just down there to the right hand side. You can set and make sure that you've got the position of the bucket to the ground or up high and you can change the angle so that you can set that position and you can repeat that position just by the press of the button which means that you're not going to hit the cut cutting edge on the ground and scrape it along so you save that cutting edge from what i've heard you've also added a brilliant aircon system in here where you set it to one temperature and it could be like that all day would you like to tell us how that works that's right if you just look up there on the top right you can see the temperature gauge if you just turn the dial you can turn that all the way down from 25 down to like 18 17 16. now when you're in in there that will basically automatically temperature control just like in a modern car so it will maintain that that heat level whether it's hot or cold all day long and if you close the door then it it really cools down really quickly so Ilias, is this the aircon filter yep so if i open up in here we've got the air conditioning inside which is now an improved about 60 percent higher efficiency we've got the air intake filter and we've got a reset filter in here now these filters are replaceable with either charcoal or a merv 16 which is high filtration levels for different applications different industries so you've really got a lot of air coming in to blow through all the, the, the vents inside. So what would this help with the control of like dust, say in different countries or in? That's a very good point, Lucas. With this cab, it's, it's sealed and pressurized when you've got the air conditioning or the heating on. If you've got any air blowing out into the cab, it's basically expelling any dust. So the dust can't get in through any nooks and crannies. And basically you've got a really clean, safe, cool environment from smell, from odors and dust. So it's really important for operators. Elias, from what I've heard, they've whacked a new engine inside this 908. Would you like to tell me the differences? Absolutely. As I open this engine bay, the layout of this is very similar to our previous M series, but we've taken our old uh, 3.2 litre engine and replaced it with a C2.8 Caterpillar designed and manufactured engine, which is built just down the road in Peterborough. This engine has more torque than our previous generation and we've got more controls through software so we can do things like auto engine shutdown and we can play with the, the parameters to give you a more efficient ride. Is there anything more efficient about this engine compared to the last model? That's a very good question. With the, the exiting of red diesel and now having to use white diesel off a forecourt, fuel prices have definitely gone up for operators. This engine is a very fuel efficient engine. As I said, it's a 2.8 litre engine. In operation, we get a, a similar fuel economy to our previous generation, but you get a lot more work done. The hydraulics, the powertrain, the, the, the drive, the material moved and the, the distance traveled is shorter and quicker versus our previous generation. What's the best feature you think of this new engine? So from an engine perspective, I think the main thing being a stage five engine and the 2.8 litre with the increased torque, it's the power when you need it and the controllability within our software 
Again, things like the auto engine shutdown, it saves you fuel because when you're not using the machine, it will shut down when, you don't, when you're not operating. Right, would we like to move on to that shock and vibrations factor on this now? Absolutely. So what we're talking about here is the rotary sensors. So we've got a sensor up here at the top of the loader arm, and then we have another sensor here on the tilt linkage. What this does is this is programmed within the, the computer in the, in the cab to know exactly the angle and height and position of both of these components. So what that means is you can then adjust the position and you can set the cutting edge in reference to the ground, just say a couple of centimeters above the ground. So every time you can return to exactly the same position. This is something that's an exclusive in this size of loader. Our larger wheel loaders have had this for a while. This is a first in this size class which gives us that benefit and, op and operation efficiency. So would that help with the comfort in the cab maybe? Absolutely, Lucas. Because you've got these sensors and they know where the arm is at all time, when you're the operator in the cab and you want to raise and dump the bucket or lower and curl the bucket, normally it would slam down and you'd get shakes all through the machine, through the tyres into the cab. And all that vibration over the day would make you a bit fatigued. With this, it's got cylinder snubbing. So as you get to the end of a stroke of a cylinder, it will snub, which means it's going to compress slowly, which means that inside the cab, you're more comfortable. But the added benefit to that is if you've got material in the bucket or if you've got a fork carriage, it's going to smooth down that transition so that you're not going to spill that material out, which saves you money and you're more efficient. What's the difference between the control of the bucket with the high lift and the other 908? So on this arm, this arm is a very long arm. We've added almost half a meter to the length of this arm, which means that it can raise up higher and it can reach further. The two main applications for this is waste and recycling or agriculture. And in waste, you can reach up into the hoppers that are feeding the conveyor belts for sorting, but also you've got the ability to load the high-sided trailers that are taking that material away. And in, in agriculture, instead of placing, say, the third bale in a, in a barn, you can now place the fourth bale. So with the 906, 907 and 908 and the 908 high lift, what's the difference between all of them? OK, so the 906 is our smallest machine. It runs on eight R18 tyres and it has a shorter arm and a lower cab. The cab is low enough that it can drive into a shipping container or into low barns. Then you go to the 907, you've got an extra height, still the same size tyres and the same length arm, but you've got extra height, you've got that larger fuel tank you talked about earlier, so you can run longer and you can be a bit more efficient. The 908 goes up a bit bigger, longer loader arms, R20 tyres, so they're bigger diameter, heavier tyres, and the cab height is a bit higher. And then this new high lift with this new generation, this is really giving us that extra reach and extra height. We're slightly reduced payload because it's the same counterweight as a standard lift, but it can easily do the work on a, on a farm or in agriculture or in the recycling. So there's a different application and a different uh, kind of job site for each of these machines. Seems like you've got a fair bit of customization here with this machine. Would you like to sell us a bit more? Absolutely. These machines can be reconfigured in multiple ways from the factory. You can pick things in the cab, you can pick uh, different auxiliary lines, standard flow or high flow, different powertrain speeds, so you can do 12 miles an hour or 20k, or 25 miles an hour and 40k, which is a new for us on this generation machine. And in the cab, there's multiple seats, different joystick controls, front or rear cameras, even like cool box storage. So if you want to keep your drink cold, during the day and you've got air conditioning, you can keep those cold as well. But we've also added on this generation of machine the ability to upspec this later. So if you buy the machine, you can then add the kits afterwards and those kits can be retrofitted by the customer or by the dealer. All right, Elias, I think that's going to wrap it up for us today. Thank you for your time here at Caterpillar and I will be sure to see you again soon. Thank you, Lucas. Very good questions.